Okay. So, Kwe, Wacha, bonjour tout le monde. Welcome to our first uh, one hour webinar on sustainable economic recovery. I'm Chantal Amelin. I'm the Director General of the Secretariat. I'm accompanied today by Jacqueline Montfourny and Maggie Kistabish from our team. Please let me uh, take a moment to share my screen to you, to present to you the Secretariat correctly. So for over 17 years, the Secretariat, uh, which has more than 2,000 uh, subscribers in its network, has successfully worked to bring together communities and is recognized by the Cree Nation, the Jemaisien, the Abitibi Timiskaming region, and beyond the border of Quebec. So I'm pleased to have been part of the management team for already 11 years. All of our activities, which Um, our like conferences, uh, our business exchange day, uh, our orientation missions, they're, they're all activities based on our four pillars. So we inform, we communicate, we promote exchange, and we bring together. And of course, uh, all of our planned activities uh, so far were disrupted. Uh, by the uh, COVID-19, just like all of us. Uh, our annual conference, usually held in the spring, uh, was postponed to June 2021. So it is in the spirit of our four pillars that we bring you these greatly informative webinars. So I'm convinced you will enjoy this. Now, let me bring you to the housekeeping of, uh, of this webinar. Just to optimize the experience of all, please keep the sound muted and the video uh, uh, turned off, please. All your questions can be asked all through this webinar by using the chat button completely at the bottom of your screen and send directly to our staff, Jacqueline Montfourny and the webinar will be recorded and later sent to you by email and put, on our, and put as well on our website. So now I'm pleased to present to you our speakers. I'm presenting you Mr. Kyle Cote, who will be speaking on waste management challenges and solution in a Nordicity context. Uh, Carl has over 25 years experience in the environmental service industry as professional engineer, regional director, and in business development. With a strong history of working and developing business relationship with the First Nation and Inuit communities and associations, in projects conducted in Quebec, Ontario, Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, Nunavut, and the Northwestern Territory. Cal Cote is actually project director, Northern and Indigenous Affairs at Senexen Service Environmental Inc. We will have as well um, Ms. Elisabeth Morin from Fonds Ecolidar, who will be presenting us uh, the eligible funding programs. A uh, graduate of UCAM Master Degree in Environmental Science, Elisabeth has a diversified and multidisciplinary background, having become interested in natural resources during her first academic cycle, the importance of sustainable development in companies led her to continue her studies in environment. Dynamic and persevering, Elizabeth is always looking for a new initiative to reduce environmental impacts. She has collaborated on various projects in life cycle analysis, the circular economy, as well as zero waste and the eco design. So let's welcome our two speakers and I will leave the floor to Cal. Um, and I will be coming back completely at the end for the conclusion. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will proceed with uh, sharing my screen. Oh. OK. 
Okay, so I will uh, first uh, start by thanking uh, Chantal Amelin for inviting me to, uh, to present uh, during this webinar. Uh, thank you as well for the uh, other members of the uh, Secretariat uh, team. Um, the presentation uh, I, I will be um, offering to you is, is entitled Waste Management in the North, uh, Challenges and uh, Solutions. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a very uh, basic um, uh, presentation, uh, not too technical, not too many numbers, no science, just basic uh, uh, common sense. Um, the presentation is going to uh, go as such. So after the introduction, we'll uh, just discuss waste management practices in Quebec. Uh, then we'll follow by the current uh, waste management practices in uh, the Cree communities. We will also, after that, uh, proceed with uh, challenges uh, of, of uh, waste management in the Cree communities and also provide some uh, solutions for improvement. So uh, bear in mind that this presentation is uh, from the point of view of a, a contractor. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be presenting more the, the business perspective and also uh, the point of view of a, um, a contractor who has uh, partnerships in uh, various uh, northern regions, including uh, Nunavut, uh, Nunavik, um, the Creek um, region of Iwishchi, as well as uh, the North Shore with the uh, Inu uh, nations. So first of all, what is uh, waste management? So the general concept of waste management involves a collection and a removal, processing, and finally disposal of materials considered waste. So the collection and removal is the basic door-to-door uh, -door collection using garbage trucks or simply having uh, individual individuals bring their waste uh, to a you know various uh, collection sites. Uh, while processing of the waste uh, may involve the sorting the waste, segregation, separation, compaction, shredding, all this you know before or after collection of the waste. And finally, disposal. Disposal can be in a, a landfill site. It can be uh, also uh, in, in an incineration facility. Uh, and also now we have uh, recycling pretty much everywhere. So that's another uh, form of disposal. So that's just general concept. The types of waste uh, that, we, that we normally are used to uh, seeing and dealing with First of all, there's a municipal solid waste, so that says it. It's it's waste uh, the solid waste that's uh, managed by municipalities, towns, villages, and bank councils. Um, this includes residential and commercial uh, waste, as well as institutional. Um, uh, we also have construction and demolition uh, debris or waste, uh, which also presents a, a relatively large volume. Of, um, so and that's only generated from uh, work sites. So here we'll talk about uh, wood, concrete, steel, asphalt, gypsum, plastic, foam, etc. And finally, industrial waste. Uh, we we won't touch uh, that that subject today. Uh, it's it's normally it's specialized management for this type of waste. Uh, mining waste is included in, in industrial waste. So we're going to concentrate today on. Um, uh, the type of waste that the communities in the Cree region of EUSG have to um, uh, deal with. So the general uh, waste management uh, practices in, in Quebec and in North America in general, um, first of all, um, there's uh, uh, landfilling, okay, landfilling pretty much Traditionally, everything uh, went into the ground. Everything, all types of waste went into the ground. Um, and, and this caused, uh, uh, you know, space constraints. A, lo a lot of the towns, uh, you know, you filled up a hole. Once it's full, you need to find another hole. So space constraint is, is a, a, an important issue in, in landfilling. Another issue uh, with landfilling of waste is the leachate. Uh, so that's the, 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 the toxic liquid that, that's generated as water infiltrates through uh, the waste. So normally that's, that's uh, uh, resolved by simply removing hazardous waste from 
um, the municipal solid waste. Um, and finally, another issue with landfilling is uh, methane gas. So, but the, but the biodegr biodegradable waste or uh, comp compostable waste um, degrades into methane gas, and that gives uh, um, that gives way to um, uh, issues of safety because methane gas is uh, explosive, and also issues with greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions. So uh, those, those are the three main issues that, that we find with uh, the landfilling of waste materials pretty much everywhere in Quebec. And as we'll see also in uh, the Cree communities is uh, similar uh, issues. So uh, in order to resolve the problem with the lack of space, um, we had to, or the society had to uh, uh, reduce the volumes of waste. So one of the ways to reduce the volume of waste that's going into a landfill was to implement recycling. So we removed uh, metals, plastic, and all different types of waste that, that can be reused um, um, by, by being recycled. So plastics being reused as you know other types of plastics, same thing with glass and metals, or can be reused for their uh, energy value. So waste wood, instead of being landfilled, if you burn it, recover the waste, make electricity, okay, et cetera. So, um, so recycling um, is, is like was added uh, eventually historically after uh, landfilling. The second uh, waste management uh, uh, procedure or that, that, that was added after recycling was the removal of hazardous waste from the municipal uh, solid waste stream. And that solved the leachate issue. So now you had less toxic uh, 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 leachate or liquid coming out of the landfill sites. Remember, uh, hazardous waste counts for about only 1% of the total waste sent to a landfill, but it's that 1% that's the most harmful for the environment. So by removing this hazardous waste, uh, you can recycle uh, some things. You can recycle uh, metals from batteries and from electronics, and you can also, uh, for example, contaminated soils can be treated and reused. Waste oil can also be recycled or burned uh, for uh, uh, energy recovery. So that's the, the, the third um, man waste management um, um, procedure that, that was added uh, historically. And finally, uh, composting. Um, a lot of the, the municipalities in Quebec now offer composting or offer compost bins for um, uh, residents. Um, some communities don't, so it's, it's pretty much the last um, item in, in the waste management practices uh, that, that, that has been added uh, in, in, uh, in the management of waste in Quebec. So residential, municipal, and industrial um, uh, biodegradable waste is recovered uh, for the production of compost and also the production of biofuels. So again, you get a market value for these two products, compost and biofuels. So now let's get into the more interesting uh, part of the presentation. So the current waste management practices in EU um, The uh, municipal solid waste, again, as in the rest of Quebec, is mostly uh, generated by residential, commercial, and institutional. Industry is, is, is less uh, common within the communities. Um, and, and in, in EUSG, the, there's a growing population uh, which brings growing waste volumes. Um, and so that's an issue that, that, that we'll, we'll uh, touch on uh, in, in a couple slides. Uh, construction and demolition waste is also important in the communities. There's lots of construction because the populations are growing. And uh, therefore, there's a lot of construction waste and a lot of demolition waste uh, as well. So the uh, EU ISG, uh developed a, a or, or had a regional waste ma management plan developed a couple of years ago, and most communities also have a local hazardous waste management plan, and that's pretty much implemented. So the Cree model right now is landfilling. Um, most communities have uh, eco centers or, 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 or about to, to have them. 
Um, some communities will have them eventually, but the, the plan is to have an eco center in each community uh, to uh, recover the recyclables and as well as the hazardous waste. And uh, some communities have started implementing a soil treatment facility. Again, not all communities, but the plan is to eventually that each community would have a, a soil treatment facility. Composting, um, probably eventually as well. Uh, right now, to my knowledge, uh, there's, there's no community that's, that's doing composting, but uh, that should uh, come along uh, in, 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 in the coming, coming years. Um, so current practices, again, EUSG, landfilling, not all communities are at the same level. Some are, are in a transition, transition stage. Some are still operating old dumps. Some have new landfills. Uh, Wiminji, for example, had an incinerator for many years. I hear it's down. Um, it's not 100% sure if they're going to go for another incinerator or a landfill. I think they're, they're, they're debating right now, but uh, that, that was a, an exception in, in USG, having a waste incinerator. Um, <clears throat> And whether the communities have a night eco center or not, uh, most of them will uh, stockpile rec recyclables at their old dumps. So they will have uh, uh, stockpiles of tires and metal, concrete, soil, which is uh, eventually uh, sent south uh, or, or, or you know, crushed, reused for, for like different, uh, different uses. Um, also, the landfills are different uh, in, in, in from one community to another. Some are shallow pits, some deeper. Some have real trench landfills with a daily cover of waste with uh, granular material. The uh, communities in USG that have eco centers will basically uh, recover hazardous waste, uh, wood, metal, paper, cardboard, aggregates, so soil and plastics. Uh, all of them have a controlled access, so that, that helps uh, um, control what's, what's being brought to the site and, and how it's managed and makes you know, work easier for uh, municipal workers. The uh, very few communities that have soil treatment facilities will recover petroleum hydrocarbon contaminated soil, so soils impacted by diesel, gasoline, oil, they'll recover those soils and treat them for reuse in the community. So those soils no longer have to be shipped south at, at a greater uh, cost. So that's, that's uh, uh, pretty much a big picture of what's being done in, in the communities right now. So landfilling, eco centers, and soil treatment facility. So if, if we uh, discuss challenges right now, um, the main challenge with landfilling is again, like in Southern Quebec, is a space uh, constraint. So lack of space. In EUSG, there's lots of land surface, uh, but the issue is often uh, the vertical space. So when you dig to make a landfill, if you hit bedrock, uh, shallow bedrock or shallow grain uh, groundwater, um, the, 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 these bring issues. Um, so some communities have uh, these, the, these issues with, with uh, space constraints. The landfills are filling up quick, uh, again, because uh, rapid population growth in the communities. So that's, that's uh, a challenge that has to be, uh, that has to be addressed, and we'll, we'll talk about solutions after uh, listing all, all the, uh, the challenges. Other challenges, um, animals, um, often called nuisance animals. Um, I know a lot of those animals are not nuisances uh, for the Cree um, when they're out on the land, but when they come close to the landfills, um, there, there's a, a, a safety uh, issues for uh, people and also health uh, issues for the animals. Uh, foraging or, or, or you know eating uh, garbage from from the dumps. So, like uh, when you when you think of animals, when you when you want to associate animals to dumps, you think of, of bears. But there's also birds, uh, rodents, and those rodents will 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 attract foxes, wolves, even wolverines. We've seen at at, at some uh, some uh, landfill sites and create communities. 
another challenge are the environmental impacts of, uh, of these landfills. Um, there's, there's wind uh, scattered trash that, that impacts the surrounding uh, 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 environment. It's, it's more aesthetic, but still people don't like seeing uh, garbage bags a uh, hundred kilometers, you know, a, a kilometer from, from the site uh, pretty much everywhere in nature. So that, that's an issue. Odors are an issue. Um, impacts to surface water, uh, creeks, uh, groundwater as well. Um, most, most, most landfills are, are far to, from communities. Uh, but uh, they're also close to camps, so you, you're you're uh, you're preventing the odors and the impacts to the communities. But camps are often uh, um, impacted by uh, by uh, those, those landfills. So solutions uh, to um, to space constraints. Uh, first of all. Uh, you know, volume reduction. If, if you can reduce the volume of waste you're sending to the landfill by removing recyclables and hazardous waste, which is being done, then you're helping uh, fill, up, fill up the hole less quickly. Um, having, having eco centers as well uh, uh, helps um, to, to manage uh, this type of waste. Um, removing organic waste should be done eventually. That's going to help with space constraints it's also going to help with uh, controlling animals so organic waste to be removed and to be composted in a composting uh, facility also with newer landfills normally there's there's a daily cover of the waste with granular materials so that's going to help with um, uh, you know attracting less uh, animals and basically just having um, uh, new landfills normally they're, they're 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 better managed than the old dumps. So daily cover uh, will help uh, with with most of the, these these issues. Uh, controlled access and fencing as well. A lot of those the the older sites don't have controlled access, so sometimes uh, stuff goes uh, into the dump that 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 shouldn't be going there. So that's that's an important uh, uh, so solution as well to to. Uh, uh, for, for landfilling. Now, if you look at the eco centers and the materials that are being uh, recovered uh, there, um, I'd say that the, the, the challenges are the product outlets, okay, the southern markets where you want to send your recycled um, cardboard, your recycled metals. Uh, there, there's, there's markets for those materials, but the transport costs to bring them to transfer stations in Abitibi or Shibugamu and then to the treatment facilities in southern Quebec are important challenges. Um, those, those transfer stations are just intermediate sites. They're not the final uh, location for the waste. So um, it's, it's important to um, uh, look at, at, at trying to minimize transport costs. The other thing is the quality and the state of those recycled materials. The better the quality, um, the greater market value you're going to get for those uh, products. So it's important to uh, manage and, and, and we'll see it later in, in the solutions. It's important to look at those, this quality and safety material to uh, maximize the market value of your waste materials. Um, so transport costs can be reduced if you can take advantage of the backhaul from, uh, for example, Kipa transport or other carriers uh, going up north uh, with vans and trucks full and coming back empty. So we've done a lot of projects where we've taken advantage of that uh, to, to, to the advantage of the client to reduce our transport costs to bring waste material back down south. Uh, I, I think it's, it's important also for the regular carriers like Kipa to, to try and adapt their uh, transport equipment also um, to to uh, optimize and, and, and uh, the, 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 the logistics and the transport of, of waste materials coming back down south. Um, you also need to get good segregation, good separation of your materials in the communities to increase uh, your, uh, your market value. Um, so for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, send, sending whole cars, scrap metal cars down south, uh, it's important to remove uh, the batteries, the oil, the fuel in them. Um, it's, uh, 
w whatever type of waste you have, whether it be hazardous waste or metals, good segregation is, is a, a key to um, uh, increasing market value. Same thing, compaction of waste, sending uh, loose metal uh, uh, instead of, of uh, compacted metal bales. Uh, you're not going to get the same uh, value for your steel uh, when it gets to the, uh, the, 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 the southern site. Uh, same thing, proper packaging, proper preparation of your waste material is going to help with your market value. Um, there's pr provincial recovery programs for hazardous waste. All those programs are available as well in EUSG. Uh, the only issue is again the transport. In southern Quebec, normally transport is included, it's free. When those programs go up, uh, up north, sometimes the, 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 the transport isn't included. So, uh, But again, all those programs if you want to get a good value for your, 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 your waste materials, a good market value, you need to get, you need to follow the rules of the programs and you need to um, segregate and separate properly uh, your different types of waste. Now for the soil treatment facilities, uh, what we've seen uh, up, up north in the Cree communities uh, is longer treatment times. Uh, it takes more time to treat the soil because of the shorter uh, season, but also uh, potentially because of lack of expertise and experience of uh, the communities treating those soils. Um, and there's, we, also, we often see backlog, the, the, the sites are full, um, the, the soils are not being treated rapidly enough, so there's, there's some revenue losses uh, associated uh, with that. So um, solutions to that would be a good characterization of the soil, good sampling, good, good analyses of, of the, the, the soil to make sure it's properly characterized and, and, and that, that, that you're bringing soil at the site that can effectively be uh, treated. Um, also, again, segregation, separating the soil with, which, which are contaminated by light uh, hydrocarbons versus heavier hydrocarbons. They're not treated the same way. They're not, not the same treatment time. So again, segregation, another key word for soil treatment and applying cold weather techniques. So uh, I, I think it's important for, for the communities to partner up with, with experts, uh, con contractors and, and companies specialized in soil treatment um, and that, that can help them treat the soil um, more quickly. So to conclude, because time is, uh, going fast, I'm a, a bit, a uh, couple of minutes late. So uh, keys to improved uh, waste management in the key, uh, Cree communities, waste minimization. That's pretty much everything worldwide. We wanna try and, and limit the type of, the, the, the quantities of waste, not only going to landfilling, but also going to the, the eco center. If, if we can reduce the, the packaging uh, that we purchase, uh, just reduce consumption, um, in general, uh, I, I know it's it's it might be easier said than done, but uh, there, there, there's efforts that have to be put uh, everywhere uh, in Quebec, including in the Cree communities, to reduce consumption and automatically reduce the type the the, the quantity of waste uh, that that's going to need to be managed. Uh, repair, reuse, okay, trying and and that goes with recycling, recycling, repairing, reusing, same thing important in, in, in waste management. And all this uh, can be improved by information, education, and uh, training. I repeat, I, I said it again, and I'll say it, I'll say it again. Uh, a, a good segregation, very important, whether it be hazardous waste, soil, uh, metals, good segregation will increase your market value for uh, your, your, your different waste, waste materials going down south for recycling. Uh, good packaging of the waste, good preparation in conjunction with, with, with the uh, transport companies, and again, uh, trying to get lower transport costs, trying to take advantage of the back, the, the back hauls going, going south, uh, empty or, or, or practically empty. Composting will have to be implemented as well, uh, eventually in the communities to help uh, with, with various uh, issues. And again, it's going to be important for the companies, uh, for the communities to partner up with uh, companies who had the expertise in composting to make sure you don't have issues with odors, with uh, long, long composting times, uh, et cetera. 
and again, information, education, and training. Um, so to conclude, there's a, uh, you know, let, let, let me finish by saying that there's, there's money to be made with garbage uh, in the communities. Um, there's money for, uh, for contractors. There's money to be made by local uh, companies, by the municipalities as well, by the bank councils. Um, and, and it might be interesting for, for, to partner up uh, for the communities, communities to partner up with uh, uh, experts from down south to help with uh, these uh, waste management uh, issues. So um, uh, just quickly before I, I uh, give, give uh, the, 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 the stage to uh, Elizabeth, um, some funding programs that are available include, I'm not an expert in, in those funding programs, but some of the pro projects we've worked with were funded by Plan A, uh, with the Quebec government, and some of them were funded as well with the First Nations Waste Management Initiative, which unfortunately was put on hold this year because of COVID-19, but uh, hopefully it will be back uh, next year. So uh, thank you very much um, for uh, your time and for your interest, and I will uh, let my uh, co-host, Elizabeth uh, Morin from Fond Eco Leader. I will let her um, continue with her presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Carl, for the very interesting presentation of uh, Waste Management Challenge and Solution. Thank you uh, also at uh, Chantal and Jacqueline to uh, invent, uh, uh, invite me. Um, so the presentation will be in English, it's not my first language, so I apologize in advance for all the mistakes I will probably uh, make. So I will share my screen, my screen, and I will begin with the presentation of the Fond Eco Leader. So I am uh, Elisabeth Morin, the agent, uh, the agent of the Fond Ecolder from uh, the, the from Montreal. So uh, for the moment, you the agent in the north of Quebec is uh, is not uh, is not available. So you will have uh, someone probably during the summer. So if you have any question about the Fond uh, Ecolder, don't hesitate to contact me, send me an email, or uh, call me directly. You will have my um, my information at the end of this uh, presentation. So the Fonds Ecolider is uh, was created by the Ministry of Economic and Innovation, uh, and they mandate three partner uh, to uh, manage the, the funds and the 18 other agents uh, who are working uh, in the field, like me, uh, in each region of the Quebec, because it's a uh, province and funds, so uh, it's available for um, for all the for all the province of Quebec. And um, so why the Fonds Ecolder was created, the Ministry of, uh, of um, Economy and Innovation uh, ident identifies some obstacle. The main of, uh, so the, the, the Fonds is for the small and medium businesses. And uh, in fact, they, 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 they seems to, to, to see like the lack of lack of time uh, to find adapt tools and uh, and knowledge uh, they didn't have time to invest the, the this time to a new sustainable project uh, in our day to day uh, also the entrepreneur lack of expertise about the sustainable project and and uh, to carry and all the resources they can find to carry out the, the project and the also lack of uh, financial resources means investment and also productivity difficult uh, to evaluate. And so the, the ministry uh, made the observation that the, the offer before the Fonds Ecolder was uh, disorganized and not really appropriate for the small and medium businesses. So they create the Fonds Ecolder. So um, what is the benefit of adopting eco-friendly practices and clean technology? So you have a lot of different uh, benefits. It can answer sustainability. It can reduce operating and resources exploitation cost. Uh, like uh, if you add a, a mix of the different renewable energy, like the the wind turbine you can see on the picture, uh, it can be interesting to uh, uh, to add some of 
of the renewable energy and to, to have a mix with hydro or something else to, uh, to reduce the operating cost or the energy of the building. Also, you can consolidate and develop new market, as you can see as in the picture of the greenhouse uh, in, the, in the slide. Uh, it, it can be interesting to, to develop this kind of market in the north. Uh, also, you can attract and return uh, talented employees by maybe, um, uh, uh, as you can see on the, on the slide, I, I add some certification and norms like uh, ISO or B Corp or ECOSAR. And uh, if you add the uh, sustainable value to your mission of uh, businesses, you can uh, attract and return uh, talented employees. It's a, it's a really uh, a good thing to do uh, in, in for the moment. And also we can maximize the productivity and build the customer's voice. So who are uh, eligible? If you are a profit company, you can be a big one, a big company or a small or medium. You, it, it really doesn't matter. It's, uh, uh, it's, it, if, you have, if you are a profit company, you are eligible. If you are a non-profit organization, you have to make 40% uh, percent income from activity uh, annual income. It's really, you can, uh, you can um, be uh, only uh, living on subvention, but you have to do some uh, in income uh, annually from your activity. Uh, cooperative also uh, are eligible. And what is really important for you, it's a pro and it's new, it's new from this year because uh, uh, it, it was added really uh, recently. So a project was submitted by a company with a band council or Norton community, um, was a majority shareholder, oops, sorry, may exceptionally be financed by the fund eco leader. So I really encourage you to, uh, to, to deposit the, your, if you have a project. So what are the organization level of fund eco leader? So for the leverage for businesses, you have the expertise of the 18 agents everywhere in the, in the province of Quebec. And uh, as an agent, we have access to uh, a lot of uh, different expertise, tools. Uh, we know uh, the financial program, but also if you need to be, uh, um, if, you, if you need to, to have someone to help you in the, in the implementation, we can help you and refer someone uh, for you. And also, we, uh, we know uh, a lot of different funding uh, you can maybe be interested. So the fund is, uh, is 18.5 million for, uh, for all the province of Quebec. So it's from, uh, for all the province, so it's not for each region. But I will explain to you how you can, what you can have for each project a, a bit later in the presentation. So if we continue, sorry about that. So the funding uh, will support businesses development in conjunction with the existing program uh, in order to conduct studies, to develop concrete action plans, uh, to provide expertise and assistance. And you can, depo uh, you can in fact um, deposit your project if you are only one businesses with uh, uh, one issue and you, and you have a, a project. But if you also uh, want to reduce the global cost, you can uh, find and other businesses with the same challenge as yours and maybe uh, deposit with another business in, and it will uh, reduce the global, the global cost if you use the same expert. So if you have any idea uh, of that kind of uh, deposit, you, you just have to send me an email and I will look at your project with you. Uh, it will be my pleasure. So what is uh, sustainable practices? So uh, Carl uh, introduced us to the waste management and a different challenge. So uh, I just focus on this for this one, but you, we, we can depos uh, deposit your project in different area for the different field of uh, sustainable practices in the, the Fonds Equilidar. Um, basically, you need to manage major aiming to improve economic performance and businesses productivity while addressing an environmental, man, uh, environmental issues. Sorry about that. Uh, so if, for example, you want to train for your employees for recycling or compost, add compost in, in your company. If you want to add and develop social responsibility uh, policies or the sustainable policies uh, also, uh, everything or who is uh, related to uh, your footprint can be really interesting. Uh, electric truck, if you think uh, it can be inter interesting to um, change your truck and add electricity system, it can be really a good way to, uh, to uh, improve your sustainability. 
uh, also uh, about landfill and eco center, uh, eco center if you want to improve something in the, the way they you build it or you use it and be really interesting to uh, do the uh, an, an analysis or a diagnostic about that uh, carbon sequestration or uh, leachate flow management so that that's uh, some example of uh, sustainable practices who can uh, be uh, founding by the Fonds Ecolidar. The other thing uh, the Fonds Ecolidar are finan financing is, uh, is it will support the businesses who want to be better prepared to use the green technology. So it has to be an equipment, a project or a machinery, but uh, no virtual software are eligible. So uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, specific thing you have to, uh, uh, to, to, to know. So if you want to add the uh, optic scanner, heat co-generation, smart ventilation tech, or smart lighting can be uh, interesting to use the fine color for that. If you want to develop a project uh, uh, on renewable energy also, or biomethanization or biofuel can be also, um, you can receive a fine leader for, for doing that kind of project. So for the funding detail, you can receive 30,000 of 50% uh, of the expert fees. It's the, the amount total you can receive for the first uh, phase of the sustainable practices. You have three phases for the sustainable practices. The first one is all the feasibility studies and you can receive a max amount of 10,000. If for, it's for that uh, the, the kind of project like uh, energy audit, uh, characterization study of residual material. It's only example, you can have like a lot of different uh, other studies. You can also uh, receive 10,000 for, uh, is the same for 50% of the expert fees for the plan and policy, so for um, timeline, project, or action plan. And the last one is for expert intervention, if you want the super of an expert uh, to implement the practices. So it's all, uh, it's uh, 10,000, like uh, the two other ones, and it's for 50% um, of the expert fee. For the other, uh, other thing we are, um, financing the great green technologies you have a maximum amount of 50 uh, uh, 50 thousand uh, it's it's uh, still for 50 percent of the expert fees and we uh, merge the um, feasibility study with the plan and policy so you can get 35 percent uh, 35 percent sorry 35 thousand um, for this first uh, phase and you can do feasibility tests fintech resources and stuff like that and you can receive a, a 15,000 uh, additional uh, amount for expert intervention if you want to help, if you need help to supplier uh, approach or price negotiation or other uh, stuff like that to, to, to help you to find the good technology to implement. So the specification, the fine colder, you can have a maximum of 50% uh, of, of the amount, uh, the total amount of the project, but you can also add a municipal, provincial, or a uh, federal contribution of a maximum of uh, 55, 25%, uh, uh, and the total amount available from public funds is 75%. So the minimum you have to put a uh, contribution for a business is 25%. If you don't find and I can help you to find another uh, contribution from the public funds. But if we, we can't, to, we, we just have to, you will receive the 50% of the fund leader and you will have to put 50% uh, from your company. The eligible cost is the professional fees, the project management fees, uh, the transfer session fees um, for the expert or the project manager. And you can also add a 5% uh, for the equipment and 10% uh, for training. So it's not a, it's not really high, but it, it can be interesting to add it if you, if, if you can just add it in the project. So uh, other, fund, uh, other funding I, can, I will present to you, who are, uh, are I think really interesting. It's the first one, the Programme Climat Municipalité. The objective of this program is to encourage, uh, encourage the, money, the participation of municipal organization in the fight against climate change. The deadline is really early, uh, really soon, it's in July, the, the 10th of July, so uh, you have to hurry if you want to, to do a deposit. The type of project uh, can be financial uh, found is technical and social innovation uh, and also green uh, climate change issue like green infrastructure, ecosystem conservation or stuff like that. 
and the maximum uh, amount you can receive if it's um, it's uh, fifty thousand. So you have the contact of the person. I'm not personal uh, personally. I can help you to, uh, from this one, but you have the contact uh, and you will have after uh, the presentation. Uh, you also have a call of project from Recic Quebec about the waste gem, gem, gypsum and fine tailing. And the objective is to support projects that aim to improve the management of gypsum and fine tailing. It's uh, also, uh, the deadline is really, really soon. It's at the end of the month. So if you want to depose something, I, I encourage you to do it uh, as soon as possible. Uh, for the first component, it's to reduce the quantity of fine residue generated by CRD waste. Um, oh, and, and you can receive a maximal amount of uh, 450,000, so it's, a, it's for a really big project. The second component is to develop a packaging and recycling sector for Jepson, and you can receive uh, 250,000. So you also have the contact of the person if you, uh, may have, an, uh, if you have an idea of, uh, of that kind of project, and you will uh, be able to ask them all the questions uh, you have. So the other one is the Northern Reach program. The objective is to uh, support the Northern community to reduce rel rel reliance on diesel for heating and electricity by increasing the use of local renewable energy sources and energy efficiency. The program is, the program is ongoing, so you can depose now or, or later, it doesn't matter. And uh, the type of project is it's more technical, it's more about uh, renewable energy, so solar, wind, uh, energy storage, or um, the lead light green. And the financial super is uh, it's the maximum amount it's uh, fifty thousand dollars. And the last one I want to present to you it's another one uh, about climate change and uh, it's a climate change preparedness in the North program. The objective is to help uh, the First Nation communities improve and increase uh, public infrastructure to improve quality of life and, env and the environment for First Nation communities. It's uh, the it's the same program is ongoing. If you have uh, any type of project in vulnerability and risk assessment of climate change impact, uh, if you want to develop of uh, hazard maps and adaptation plan or uh, adaptation option, it, uh, you can receive uh, a maximal amount of uh, 450,000, but it will depend on the project and you have the, the contact on the, the slide if you want to contact it and, uh, and uh, ask a question. And this is the two example. The, the, the last program I just show you uh, as a, has been financing. So you can see in the two projects, they didn't receive the same amount. It, you can, so you can depose for a small project or for a big one. It doesn't matter. You just have to respect all the criteria they, they ask for. So this is all for the funding I, I, I present to you uh, today. If you have any question about uh, the phone corridor or the other one or other phone you, you want to know uh, better, you can send me an email or call me. So I will let uh, Jacqueline uh, take, the, take the lead and uh, answer a question if you uh, ask uh, during my presentation or the one of, uh, of that. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we have time for a couple of questions. We have one question from uh, Mrs. Poulain. She's asking what percentage of construction waste represents in the overall uh, in uh, EUSG? The, this, this question is probably to Cora, but uh, maybe uh, uh, Elizabeth, if she wants to add. Is it possible to? Uh, the, the percentage of construction waste in the overall, you, you mentioned, Carl, that uh, it was quite important, but yeah. uh, do you have any data? Um, no, I, I wouldn't have that information. Um, no, sorry. I, it's, 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 it's important, but uh, I'd say maybe 50%, but uh, don't, don't, don't. Uh, don't hold me on it. Might be a bit less too. So, but it's it's a it's important volume. Yeah. Okay, and there was another question from Mrs. Amelin. Uh, apart from plastic, is there a real impact uh, of waste on a region like EUSG, which has uh, only eighteen thousand inhabitants? Uh, since uh, if we if we don't take in account the um, the waste that comes from the south, uh, she she's asking what yeah. is the the real impact of waste in a, a 
huge region like this yeah. with the well, the, the, there's no, there's a, a general agreement that uh, the, the impact is low and, and very localized. So it's, it's local impact around the landfill sites. And, and the biggest impact is, is visual. But uh, tally men uh, are, are usually very sensitive to having uh, a, a landfill on their trap line, um, especially for the older landfills, which are, which were, you know, less, maybe not um, managed as well as, as the newer landfills. Uh, but again, like I mentioned in, 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 my, in my presentation, if, if you remove all the hazardous waste from the municipal solid waste going to the landfill site, you, you know, greatly reduce um, impacts uh, from, from, from these sites. But uh, uh, again, I mean, we, we, we see that the impacts are there. Uh, but there's there's the dilution factor as well because you know the landfills are so far uh, from the communities and normally um, there there's no or not necessarily groundwater being uh, or drinking water being used close to the landfill sites um, so the dilute the dilution factor um, is is important and and the, the like you said the the impact is uh, is low. It is, yeah. Uh, I have another question, but it's a, a, a broad question. Uh, so I might have to transfer uh, this question directly to Carl and uh, Elizabeth uh, in writing because it's a, a very uh, broad and uh, in, well, important question. Uh, we might have to, um, to transfer this question directly to you so you can answer directly. To sure. Mr. Castillo. Okay. Ça fait le tour pour nous, Chantal. Tu peux reprendre la parole pour uh, la conclusion. Oh, I'm speaking in, in French. Sorry, Chantal. That's okay, Jacqueline. <laughs> you, you always have the last word, anyway. All right. Well, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, just uh, in the conclusion, I'll share my screen just uh, to have it on the video. Uh, so it can be shared afterwards to everybody. Uh, so in conclusion, just to let you know that tomorrow we have another webinar completely on another subject. It's going to be in French this time and c'est sur les initiatives énergétiques et les programmes pour les entreprises. Alors, we invite you all to be part of the tomorrow's webinar. It's still time to register, so you can go on our website and register to, to that the other webinar. It's going to be at 2 o'clock. Same as today. Um, we also have a little, I have a little message for all of you, just to take note in your calendar that December 9th is our business exchange day. And our business exchange day is an event where we do B2B meetings. We manage to do 700 business matchmaking in one day. So it's a very effective day and a lot of networking and you must be there if you want to uh, continue your networking uh, within EUSG and within the Nunavik region. Um, and um, ending on behalf of the staff, on behalf of the Secretariat, I'd like to thank our speakers uh, to, uh, for this webinar. It's been very informative. Thank you very much. And the contacts will be in the video we'll be sending to everyone. So if uh, you have more questions, please feel free to contact our speakers directly. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow for our next webinar. So miigwech, thank you. À la prochaine.